Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video, we're going to be talking about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium like our last video. However, in this video, we're going to do a little bit of practice with those equations. Like any concept, Hardy-Weinberg is something that we're going to have to practice in order to become fluent in, in order to understand fully. So that's why we're going to be uh, using this video as a time to practice. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple techniques that we can use in order to solve these problems uh, in just various ways. I would also recommend that you go try out the quiz that goes along with this video because it'll have more problems that you can try out. So let's dive right in. All right, this is our first problem. And uh, before I get into the explanation and the answers, I would recommend that you uh, read this question on your own and try and solve it. So I'm going to give you a couple, a couple seconds to pause your browser. And hopefully by now you have uh, done this question and gotten an answer. Now the correct answers are that P equals 0.3 or 30% and Q equals 0.7 or 70%. If you didn't get these, uh, you might want to go back and see what you did wrong or uh, just check one more time. I'll give you a couple seconds to pause your screen. All right, let's solve this. Now, first things first, uh, there's a couple basic te techniques that we're going to use whenever we solve Hardy-Weinberg questions. And uh, essentially, we're going to be looking for one of three things. And those three things are Q squared, P, or Q. Now, with one of these three things, we can find any of the other, uh, any of the other quantities that are in our Hardy-Weinberg Hardy equations. But the special things about these three is that they're easy to isolate and they're easy to manipulate uh, rather than like uh, 2PQ, which is the heterozygous genotype frequency, or uh, P squared plus 2PQ, which is the frequency of the dominant phenotype, which we're often given. One of these three things will, will be the simplest way to solve these questions. So I'll start by reading the question. In a population of 400 cats, 196 of them are white, or little b, little b, the homozygous recessive genotype. Assuming that this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, find each of the allele frequencies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what we're looking for. And uh, we're looking for P, and we're looking for Q. So I'm going to leave this here so that we can remember that, and we'll go back to this. Now let's see what we know. We know that uh, there are, it's a population of 400 cats and that there are 196 that are white. So from this, we can find, we can actually find uh, Q squared. And Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype because white is the recessive uh, phenotype and genotype. We can use this 196 to find Q squared. And Q squared will actually equal 196 divided by 400. Uh, the definition of the frequency, uh, or the definition of the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype is a number with the homozygous recessive genotype, which is 196 white ones, divided by the total number in the population, which is 400 cats. So from here, it's just a uh, fairly simple algebra to find Q. Q is going to equal uh, square root of 196 divided by 400, you just take the square root of both sides, and from this uh, from this we can get that Q is going to equal 0 0.7. 196 divided by 400 is going to give you 0 0.49. The square root of that is 0 0.7, or 70%, which is our answer. From here, uh, we're going to use the second Hardy-Weinberg equation, which is just that P plus Q equals 1. And again, this is a very simple equation because when there are only two alleles, they have to add up to one. If one is 100%. You can't have more or less than 100% if you've got everything. Uh, from here, P equals 1 minus 0 0.7. Again, fairly simple algebra. Subtract Q, move it over here, and Q is 0 0.7. From here, P equals 0 0.3, which is our answer. So those are two answers, um, and that's... This is about the simplest kind of problem that you could be given, but now you know how to solve them. 
Here's our second question, and again, I recommend that you read it and try and solve it on your own before I go into the answers and explanation. I'll give you a couple seconds to pause uh, your video. All right, the, the correct answer is that uh, there are 15 cats that will be white uh, among this population. If you didn't get that, uh, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to pause and go uh, check your answer, try and see what you did wrong. Okay, let's solve this. A group of 15 cats is stranded on a desert island. All of them are brown, but three are actually carriers for the recessive white allele. Assuming equilibrium, how many white cats will there be when the population reaches 1,500 cats? Okay, so what we're looking for is the number of white cats under this population. So this actually won't be a frequency, this will be a number. Uh, be careful not to get this confused. This may seem like it's asking for Q squared, but what it's ask, actually asking for is the number of, uh, we're going to say lowercase b, lowercase b, and little b, little b is going to equal Q squared, actually times 1500, which is the population. We'll come back to this and show you why once we have Q squared. So, first thing we want to look at is this initial population, because that's all we know about. Now, the, the biggest thing to emphasize is that this initial population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. One of our, uh, one of our five, uh, five things that have to be there in order for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to occur is that you have to have a very large population, and 15 cats just does not cut it. Random mutation, or just random factors could highly influence this population, and of course, as as you can tell, there are zero white cats out in the question, and this would be impossible if it was in equilibrium. But we do what we do know is that there are 15 cats, and that three are heterozygous. A carrier is heterozygous. That's what a carrier means. So uh, one way to solve this would be to draw a table of each of the three genotypes. I'll just um, go on the assumption that you can uh, you can kind of tell, but you have 12 homozygous cats, which means each one is going to have two homozygous alleles, and there are three heterozygous cats with one homozygous allele, and then you have zero homozygous recessive cats, and three heterozygous cats with one recessive allele. What I'm doing is I'm finding the total number each allele, and we have 24 and 3, so 27 dominant alleles. Okay, and here we have 0 and 3, which is 3 recessive alleles. All right, those will be very important for us to solve our equations. Now, what we're going to be looking for, or what we're going to have to go through, is Q squared. So if you remember, Q squared is going to be um, the frequency of the homozygous recessive geno, uh, genotype, which we can find using the, the frequency of the recessive allele, which is uh, Q. And so Q, if you remember, is going to equal uh, this number, 3, that, or the, actually this 3, the total number of, heteros of uh, recessive alleles divided by the total number allele of alleles in the population, which is 27 plus 3, or you just know 15 times 2 is 30. Of course, Q is going to equal 0.1 or 10%. From there, we just square both sides. Q squared equals 0.01, and when you multiply it by 1500, you'll get um, you'll get that you'll get that this equals 15. So the number of cats that will be white when the population is this big is 15. Hopefully, you caught all that. If you didn't, go back and watch this section of the video again. Um, this is a very reasonable question that could be asked. All right, let's move on to the third question. Again, like those other two videos, I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause your video and, uh, and to check out this question, try and solve it on your own. All right, the correct answer is about 88.9% 
or 0 0.889, either one will work, but note that it asks for the percentage. If you didn't get that, uh, now is a good time to go back and check your answer, see what you did wrong, and try and correct that. I'll give you a couple seconds to pause the video. All right, let's solve the question. The frequency of the brown or dominant phenotype is 36% in a population of 1,200 cats. Assuming hardy one equilibrium, what percentage of the brown cats are heterozygous? Now, note that what it's asking for is not any sort of frequency. It's, uh, it's just a unique thing to this problem. There's no variable that we have for it. Uh, but if you notice that the percentage of the brown cats is going, the percentage of the, of the brown cats that are heterozygous is going to be the number of heterozygous, uh, which is BB, uh, big B, little b, divided by the total number of brown cats, which will be B, uh, big B, little, big B, big B plus big B, little b. This could also be. You can also find it using uh, this formula here, which is the, the heterozygous frequency divided by p squared plus 2pq, because essentially you're just dividing the top and bottom by the total number in the population. I'm going to be using this form in order to solve the, the question because it'll be easier to use. Now, the first thing to notice is that it gives you the frequency of a phenotype and specifically the dominant phenotype. When you're given the frequency of the do dominant phenotype, there's nothing you can actually do with this. This is that p squared plus 2pq uh, set of terms. And it's you could theoretically solve the, the question using this, but involves some kind of complicated factoring and a quadratic equation. The easy way is just to use our first formula. And of course, that's p, p squared, or actually our second formula, sorry plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. I'm going to group the terms like this so that it displays the phenotypes. Now, if you know that um, the dom dominant phenotype is 0.36 or 36%, then that's going to be this whole set of terms right here, and 0.36 plus q squared equals 1. From here, Q squared equals 1 minus 0.36. You can square root both sides, and Q will actually end up equaling 0.8 or 80%. And the reason for this is because, uh, let me redraw this a little bit. 1 minus 0.36 is going to be 0.64. The square root of that is 0.8, and uh, that 0.8 is 80%. So now that we have uh, this, we can solve for p, and p plus q equals 1, p equals 1 minus 0 0.8, and p equals 0 0.2. Now that we have both of these, we can plug them into this equation that we had right here. And so I'll just rewrite it. 2, p is going to be equal 0 0.2, q is going to equal 0 0.8. And here, uh, we can actually just plug in the 36, which is 0 0.36. The reason, the reason we can do this is because that's what that phenotype is. That's what we were given in the, initial, in the first place. So when you multiply this all out and divide it together, you actually get uh, 0 0.889. And this is rounded. The 8 will go on forever. Uh, but this is that correct answer, and it also equals 88.9%. You notice I see for percentage, so we'll give in percent. That's all we got for now. Again, go check out our quiz in order to get some more practice and become more comfortable with these problems. This particular problem is more complicated than something you'll generally see uh, on an AP Biology test. But it, um, if you understand this, then you're well you're well on your way to understanding Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and it's really just as simple as that.